Howdy, Possum Patty here. And today I think I'm going to work on the sunflower applique that I'm going to make for the front of this beautiful sunflower journal that I won from Rhonda at Junk Journal Diva. And it is super fun. I don't have too many journals that are made from other people. I have a, two I did swaps with, but this one I won from Rhonda. So let's see what I can come up with. Come on along. For my inspiration for the Sunflower Journal cover focal point, uh, I'm using this Dollar Tree sticker I think uh, Wanda at A Day in My World had sent me um, some of these ooh, a long time ago, and I've used them all up in my journals. This is the only one I have left here. And each petal of the flower is a slightly different shade of yellow or orange and even a different pattern, like different pattern fabrics and papers. And then a brown center, and even that has some patterns sort of like over laying each other there and then the leaves have like different patterns and then oh this can almost be stitches now that I'm looking at them closely could be sketching or stitching on fabric I like the stems very cool anyway so I'm not going to copy this exactly but I'm going to put it here as inspiration and the first thing that I did was cut a piece of muslin. I think I'll make it a little bit smaller, actually. And I'm going to sew everything onto here. And then I'm going to glue this to the cover. I'll sort of trim it out maybe a little bit and then, you know what I mean, then I'll glue it down just so I have something to, something to sew to, all the little petals and everything. So, this is unbleached muslin. So that's a perfect size, so I can put the journal aside because I won't need that till the end. Okay, so. Let's start with the center and make a flower and then a stalk and then a couple of leaves. And I have this brown quilted material that I thought I could cut. Nice and puffy. It's sort of a, it's almost an oval because you're looking at the flower at an angle. It's not really round. So we're going to go with that. I'm just kind of freewheeling here. So it's flatter on one side and rounder on the other. Is that too big? Well, sunflower does have a big center. That's what makes it look like a sunflower, right? Okay. Then I have this burlap. I don't know if this is sticker or it's just on cardboard. Oh, it's just on this cardboard. Hmm. I was thinking, see this little middle piece here? I was thinking of making a middle piece with this. Like that, and then I'll put some stitches in there some decorative stitching and let's see wow it's going to take me a while to cut all these petals out so what I'm going to do and then I'll probably do this off camera is 
just take out, like I've got all these yellow and oranges scraps and I'm going to make short ones for around this side and taller ones for that side. And I'm probably not going to pre-sketch them or anything. I'm probably just going to go with the flow and cut, cut, cut. I don't know what you call this. Free form cutting. <laughs> free flow. Go with the flow. Free flow cutting. So that might be a little too big. I'll just take it off the bottom. Like that. Okay, I'm going to go away for a second and cut out <laughs> cut out a lot of these petals. Okay, well now that that's pretty cool. So I'm following the picture here. So the ones closest are foreshortened, and you can see the bend in the the leaf, like the vein would be going down the middle, and they're covering this front part of the center of the flower just a little bit there and then the flowers in the back are behind and then I made them taller over there and a little shorter on the side oh I didn't put any green green bits all right so let's get some green material here And just some skinny green sepals. We got petals and we got sepals. Oh, I'm not gonna lift that up. I'm <laughs> just gonna put that down. I think I'm very carefully gonna lift these and glue them down and glue these bits and then this will go underneath. Um, do some sewing in the center. And I'm not going to sew around every petal, but maybe I'll put a few stitches. A few random stitches here and there. Now oh, this is a pretty green. I'm going to glue that stem down first and then the back petals and then the front petals. Now you probably don't see this up to top, probably just on the sides or the bottom. I think I'll just put three of those. Well, maybe I'll put one more. Okay, these are going to be underneath. Okay, let me get my glue stick. Let me get my glue stick here. I found that this Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength works nice with fabric. I have no idea how I'm going to do this. All right, I think first I'm going to move these because these are going to be after. And then, let's see. Oh, I think this is the one that's almost done. It's okay, I've got another one. And then I'll do the leaves last. I'll probably put some stitches on the stem. Okay, this is going to be impossible. <laughs> This is going to be impossible, 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 okay. Okay. <laughs> How am I going to do this? Okay. Calm down. Calm down. It's all good. It's all good. One thing about this uh, batik material, this batik fabric, 
sometimes it's hard to tell the front from the back. Now, I don't want to go any larger than this muslin, so that's my boundary there. I bought all these quilting scraps at a yard sale a couple years ago. They really come in handy when you're doing oh, <laughs> glue side down. Possum Patty, glue lesson number one. Glue side down. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oops. And then my fingers get all sticky. When doing flower petals, remember that all the petals come out from the center of the flower. <laughs> so make sure you've got them going from the center of the flower out, 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 out. Of course, you can make a flower any way you want to. It doesn't have to be botanically correct. If I need more, I can cut more. I've got a whole pile of fabric. Uh-oh, here comes Miss Titi. Yeah, when I started the video, she was sleeping under her blanket because it is a gray, breezy, typical New England spring day, cloudy, a little cool. Might get some rain later, and then tomorrow too. Okay, I'm going to do this side. Then I'll probably have to glue, oh, you know what? Well, yeah, I'll glue this down. I'm going to sew it, but I could sew it later. That's not a problem. I think at this point, we've got to glue this down. Because it doesn't matter what side you use. I'm going to use a little of this Fabri-Tac. No, tacky glue, not Fabri-Tac. But I will be stitching this later. I guess I can put this down now. Okay, so these petals are out that way, those are out that way, and now the ones here are coming straight towards us. So I cat is knocking my phone off the table. Not good. Not good. The sisters are texting about all kinds of <laughs> things today. For Earth Day, one sister found compostable, 100% compostable sandwich bags. Of course, if you just use a reusable container, that's probably a good thing. I know this is not how I had it, but you know, it'll do. It'll do, it'll do. It's at the end of my glue stick. I'm at the end of my glue stick. Okay, before I start sewing, I'm going to have to make the leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and... I didn't take out too many different greens, but I don't have room to make a lot of leaves, so I'm not going to worry about that. i to make a few little leaves. I should have one. Oh, I got a big orange one. I'm going to say I should have one more side, side petal there. So let me make that. I got one. We need an orange one. All my material sitting right here. I'm not sketching anything ahead of time. Just, just free forming, free forming. Okay, this has got to be 
like a side leaf like there should, should be under that one okay there is my sunflower the cat is sitting on the journal I'm going to cut the background out after I stitch. So you can see some of what's back there. All right, now, leaves, big heart-shaped leaves. For some of the leaves, they're using two different material. So like that would be half the leaf. And then, I had a fatter piece of, oh wait, here's some, there's some green scraps. How organized. <laughs> a baggie of green scraps. This must have been working on something the other day that I organized those. Ooh, yes. Oh, that's lovely. Lovely, 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 lovely. All right, let's make another one. Oh, I know. I, I was making, um, oh, for my mixed media spring garden, I was die cutting grass from these uh, scraps of material. And I put them all in a bag. Make another heart shape. And a different material here. Something different than that. Is this one different? Yeah. This one actually has leaves on it. Okay, you turn it over and just copy it to make the other half of the leaf. Does not have to be perfect. Hmm, I might go with two leaves. I was put a little one. see how that would look. Okay, and this one I'm going to put a little bit of a notch and I'm going to make it not so pointy. And I might do the same thing with this one. Okay, now we're loving this. 
All I have to do is glue these down and then I'll come back with some stitching ideas. Well, I took the flower into the living room with me and I put all my supplies in a tote. And I put my feet up and I sat on the couch and I did quite a bit of stitching. As you can see, I have stitched around every petal. And in the brown quilty part, I put some brown stitches. They don't really show up too much, but that's okay, just for texture. And in the burlap, I put some French knots with some gold thread. And again, around every petal and down the stem and around the leaf, each leaf and down the stem. And you can see my crazy stitching on the back. And then I just snipped that uh, unbleached muslin part off. And it's going to go on the cover of my sunflower journal, like that. And I was thinking almost of putting one layer underneath it. I have an idea, uh, but before I put this on the journal, there is one last touch that I have to do, and that is add my glass bee beads, and these are from BB Craft, and I will link all that information below, and I'm going to put them, and they're beads, so there's a hole there, so I could sew these on right onto that sunflower, and isn't that fun? Look at that. <gasps> Look at that. How many should I put on? Should I just put one? Should I put two? Should I put three? Three is the magic number, isn't it? I'm going to have to put three. Okay, now, um, what color thread do I want to use to sew those on? I almost want to use black. Black thread. So, I don't have any of that in my bin, so let me go find some. I do have some of my embroidery floss somewhat organized <laughs> by color groups. And I put them on rings. And I really don't want to put them in a big plastic. I know there's plastic organizer bins for um, embroidery floss, but what I like to do is just take, you know, some colors that I need and actually put them on a separate, separate ring. Um, go to my drawer behind me here. Like, um, okay, like this. This was a project I was working on when I went to visit mom. And what I did was just put some colors that I needed on a ring like this. and took this with me. And this is much handier than, you know, traveling with a great big giant plastic organizer. And I need to finish working on this, don't I? This is a page for my slow stitch just because book. And I had taken this material when I was elder care, doing some elder care. I think I will split this. In half. 
Got to get three and three, right? There we go. Three and three. I hear thunder. I started this project last night, like I said, and I took this into the living room and I put up my feet and I was stitching and we're watching some TV and we're actually streaming a, a British series, Midsummer Murders. <laughs> Midsummer Murders. And it's, um, yeah, it all takes place in England in these quaint little villages with the thatched roof cottages and the old mansions in the countryside where the leaky roofs <laughs> and the people trying to keep up with the keep up with the upkeep of those old houses I didn't split this really well there we go Very fun, very fun. There's my needle threader. Here's a needle. And it's like every every episode they go off to a village somewhere and there's always a festival. There's all kinds of festivals and and flower shows and apple oak festival and this festival and that festival <laughs> it's so fun so fun I'm sure that wasn't interesting watching me <laughs> thread a needle okay so I have these awesome glass bead 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 I have these awesome bee beads from BB craft and what I'm going to do, oh, you know what I didn't test? Oh, okay, you gotta test to make sure the needle will go through the bead. <laughs> and it does, all right. Very good possum patty, very good. Now these are glass and one of them has broken wings. So you need to be careful with that. But I love them, they are adorable. But the wing, I guess, is the most delicate part. Oh, I can go up through the fabric and then through the bee. Like that. Oh, look at that. That is, has to be the cutest thing. Look at that. Oh. All right, I'm going to go ahead and sew the other two on. Okay, I am just about to tie off my third little B on the back. Oh, you know what? I think I need to go through one more time. And I gotta put it down here because I'm using the table as my thimble right now. Because it's a uh, little thick to go through so many layers. I just put the end of the needle on the table. There we go. I think we're good now. And make a little knot. I do that like two or three times. Oops. It's always a oops. Two. Well, three is the magic number. That over there. Okay, sewing is done for right now. And I take a pin and I put this little thing right there so I have it and I'm going to put the extra thread in my bucket put that stuff down there okay 
Now, I had one more idea. I'm thinking of putting a little background around this. And while I was looking for these yellow and orangey and green bits of material, I did come across some sheer netting that is in that organizer over there. So let me see if I can find that again and how that may look. This is the organizer next to my tables right there. And I usually keep my computer on top and film, you know, when I'm filming in person and you can see my face, I'm using the webcam on my computer here and I put my light here. I got this from Walmart and it was pretty inexpensive, but it is just cheap plastic, but I wanted something to put material and embroidery floss and you know lightweight things in next to the table so that hopefully that would get me to sew more do more slow stitching because I love it and in the first bin I have these organizers for my thread and this is where I take them out of to throw in this bin. So I get my orange, oops, I got my orangey ones here. My green ones. Now some of these floss, little floss things here are just cardboard. And I really don't like them because uh, when you have them on a ring, they got to be rough and tumble, right, to um, be carried around, taken out with you. So the plastic ones do work better. Okay, in this one, I keep my blacks, grays, orange, yellows, and reds, and browns. Did you hear that thunder? Yeah, we're having a storm in there. And then put that in the drawer and I've got my blues, greens, purples and variegated in here. And there's a few other things in here. I got some appliques in here. I need to organize those better. And <laughs> I always have junk, miscellaneous junk. Little boxes of buttons. Fabric crayons. I haven't tested these yet. That's part of my Crayola 8-pack of crayons collection. And then I've got some extra floss in here. That needs to be wound around one of those little bobbin things. i got a bag of my lavender, my dried lavender in here, keeping the Draw smelling wonderful. Ooh, that does smell good. If you pick it up and give it a little bit of a crush, a little bit of some gentle squeezing there. Mmm, makes everything smell so good. Okay, so that's what's in there. In the next drawer, it's just a bunch of scraps. They're falling out of the bag. But I'm looking for a special scrap. I got some of these beaded kits to review, and I haven't done that yet. Bunny for the year of the rabbit. That's going to be fun. Uh, here's some of my new material. Oh, look at this one with the elephants and the giraffes. Keep going. These I got to review, these clay beads. And alphabet beads. I'll be working with that probably in my slow stitch. I got embroidery. <laughs> I got a kit of semi-precious stone collection to help you identify. But actually I bought this because they were small and they were gorgeous. I could pull them off and put them in my slow stitch book. And then scraps of fabric down here, but I don't see the one I'm looking for. These are larger, larger pieces. I 
and bits of trim and lace, ribbons. Oh, we got some black in here. Ooh, that's pretty. Most of this stuff I just bought at like yard sales and stuff. Not new. Not quite new. Just fell on the floor. I don't know what that is. But this is from a jumper I made when I was teaching first grade. I got a little bit left over. That's got to go on something. Definitely. Definitely. Oh, this is another one of those kits. Beaded kits. Make a little purse. I have so many kits like that because I didn't buy them. They were um, sent to me to review. More scraps. I should take up doing a lot of scrappy work with Janet Nash. I just made another video. Here's that unbleached muslin and scraps of this I love this stuff this cotton batting it just makes everything so soft and cuddly I get more of this eyelid I was going to do something with this I forget now what it was but all this has come from um, come from the flea market <laughs> I should put it in a bag I get all those teeny bags Okay, keep taking. Oh, I got more of those kits. Oh no, this was gifted to me actually. Be a blessing. Where did I buy these? Oh, you know, what? I think I bought these at the flea market. Those I got at the flea market. And I'm using my Timu bags here to organize stuff. Oh, I pulled these out for a reason. Oh, this was to make the tassel for my Kitty Boho journal. That's what all those were in there for. And I know I have so many different bags of scraps. Let's see. Oh, this was for my mermaid journal. I will be working on this summer. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful material here. And look at the, the mermaid scales. Isn't that fun? Have I found the one I was looking for yet? No. No, no, no. Sorry, self. These were gifted to me, I'm sure. Scraps. I, I need to come in here and organize some of this stuff. Trims. Okay, now is the piece I'm looking for going to be in the bottom drawer? Oh, I see it already. <laughs> I see it already. It's always in the last place you look. And this is what I was looking for, right there. Oh, so this is, I put all my tool in here. Well, that's being organized of me, right? I was thinking of this green, so we're going to see how that looks. in here for now. <laughs> I love my little sunflower applique and my sunflower journal that Rhonda sent me. She is the junk journal diva. But I was thinking about a bit of this sparkly net. I 
I think that just makes it stand out a little bit more. My busy little bees there. I have to be careful though because these are glass. Okay, how many layers do I want to put? Okay, I'm thinking, because I have this folded over and then folded over, that I don't want those folded over edges. I want to kind of mess it up a little bit. You know, I probably should put a pin in here. That would probably be a good idea. Because there's four layers, I'm going to pin this so it doesn't shift all about. So I can cut the edges and then I'm going to glue my applique to the front of the journal and it's a done deal. Okay, now I'm thinking, <laughs> now I'm thinking, hmm, tassel. <laughs> I've got all these scraps of material. that I pulled out. I, I still kept them in the little uh, baggies and I put them in the drawer, the bottom drawer, <laughs> telling myself the bottom drawer. Um, yeah, see if I remember that. I put it in the bottom drawer and wouldn't that be fun? I could punch a hole right there, have a tassel. Probably do something on the back too. Sometimes I decorate the back of the journal <laughs> just as much as the front of the journal for some strange reason. Okay, this will not cut. Not sharp enough to cut this. How about these pinging shears? Yes, those little paper scissors do not cut. I want it kind of a bit jaggedy. And I don't want these neat folded edges like that. Ooh, I'm getting glitter everywhere. Yay! My life certainly sparkles. It could be a little crooked. If it's a little crooked, that means it's possum straight. And that's perfect. Perfectly possum straight. All right, let's see how that looks. Might have to make some adjustments. No, I don't, actually. Oh, wait. Got a little, got a little hanger on her here. A dangling Chad. That was for the people who live in Florida. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. And then this is going to go on that sparkly business like that. I do. I want to keep it as the whole square or do I want to trim around? No, that would be too hard trimming around. <laughs> too hard trimming around. Alright, so because this is netting I have an idea and that is just to put tons of tacky glue on my applique. Is this an applique? Yeah, I guess it is. And just turn it over and lay it down. Pins are in the way. Get rid of some of the pins. All 
I got a little close to the edge there, didn't I? Uh, she tries to move it. <laughs> and she tries, to, after she pulls out all the pins, she tries to move it over. Okay, so now the whole thing is getting off whack here. I know I'm going to wind up putting more glue on this. So let's just go ahead and do it right now. Get it over with. Probably gonna put just a couple dots of glue like here and there and then maybe I'll put um, I don't know <laughs> a sequin or something over where the glue is that'll dry you won't even see that you won't even see that Okay. Well, there she is. Just pretend that these dots of white glue have dried and you can't see them. So I think I love it. Look at that. Beautiful sunflower with the glass bee beads from BB Craft and all that sparkly, sparkly green in the background. Helps the flower stand out from the sunflower. Beautiful material that's on there. Well, Rhonda, I hope you like what I did with the cover. And this is only the beginning, because I won't be journaling in this until after my beach journal. So this will be like late summer, early fall, when the sunflowers are blooming. Yes. So thanks for coming along today, and don't forget to check out the links below, BB Craft. Happy junk journaling. Bye-bye.